Hi guys, it's Beth here, your social media extraordinaire here at PPHQ and today for PPTV I have Tony Gargan with Hello. me. So Tony, for those who don't know you, um, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do here at Progressive. Okay, so I am a full-time property investor and now a speaker and trainer for Progressive Property and I focus mainly on the buy-to-let, buy buy refurb, refinance model Okay. and focus really on joint ventures, entire portfolio built on joint ventures. Wow, so quite a lot then. Yes. 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 Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> um, that's probably why quite a lot of people in the community, they'll know you quite well because they've seen you at like MSOPI, Beginners, Joint Ventures, you're yeah. kind of a bit of everywhere here. Yeah. yeah. I love speaking <laughs> and training, so I do a number of different areas and also I was quite averse to property when yeah. I first started, so if I can inspire other people to do it then... Fantastic. I'm here to tell other people if they can too. Well, that's um, my next point actually. So, if you take us back before Progressive, like what situation were you in? What was your um, kind of what? Where did you start really? What caused you to start and make a change? There's a couple of different things. So, I was actually an accidental landlord. Okay. I made every mistake going. I had no intention of being a landlord. Bought a house in 2007, which was probably not the best okay. time to buy. <laughs> and. I made a ton of mistakes, um, I bought at the wrong time, I bought with the wrong person, I paid too much for the house, right. I also didn't, I've always been told that if, you know, I was raised in a family where I was told if you can't afford it you don't buy it, okay. so I had, I had no money saved up, I had no debt, so I got 100% mortgage mm -hmm. with Northern Rock. Oh, okay, in 2007. In 2007. <laughs> okay. Long story short, my then boyfriend and I split up, I stayed in the property. Um, took in a lodger because I couldn't afford to stay there alone. Mm -hmm. Realised really quickly that I don't like living with people, <laughs> particularly people I don't know, as lovely as she was. So I became an illegal multi-let landlord. Okay. So I didn't know I needed permission to no. rent out the property. I was 22, I knew absolutely nothing. So I took in three people mm -hmm. and rented the property room by room. So I turned yeah. it into a, a mini multi-let, if you like. Um, and it barely covered the bills. I hated oh. every minute of it. And decided I would never invest in property. So it was an accidental landlord. <laughs> that was 2007. And then I'm, my now husband absolutely loves architecture, loves buildings, loves property, and he nagged me for a long time. So the reason he did that was we were in a house, mm -hmm. um, which was a gorgeous little cottage that we lived in, yeah. um, in a beautiful village. We rented it for a fair while, I believe renting was dead money, wanted to buy, mm -hmm. couldn't buy it from the landlord. But Chris, my husband, got talking to the landlord and he basically used to come around and collect the rent. Okay. And Chris got talking to him. He had 38 properties. He wow. was relatively wealthy, loved what he did. And Chris said, we have two options. We can either mug him, mm -hmm. which wasn't an option. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Don't mug people. You can take the girl out of Liverpool. <laughs> or we can follow what he's doing. Mm -hmm. So we started looking into what we could do to invest in property and do it in the right way without making the same mistakes I did. Yeah. So in 2014, we went along to kind of a one day event, um, learning from a different training company mm -hmm. that it's feasible to do. Um, and they had some advanced trainings and I was totally put off by it because the advanced trainings were, um, it, it was a significant investment. And at that point in time, I had a one year old and a three month old. Oh, wow. <laughs> and it just wasn't feasible for us yeah. to do in terms of it being an, a substantial investment. Mm -hmm. I then said to Chris, I didn't want to invest in property and he spent a year researching companies and he spent a long time found progressive property um, and we came along to a beginner's day beginner's okay, property yeah. secrets day in 2015 and i just loved what the company was all about yeah. i love the fact that we got taken on a tour of the building yes that it was real it was real people that the trainings that were providing we've seen real life people who've done mm. the trainings at the actual event and peter jones was uh, my beginner's property secrets trainer and I absolutely loved him. Mm -hmm. He instilled a faith into us that we could do it, showed us that we could do it using none of our own money and the investments for the, the courses were so much more reasonable that yeah. we decided pro progressive property was the route to go down. Fantastic. So from that house that you originally bought, that was in 2007, it yes. took you to 2015 to actually do make it. the decision to actually learn more and actually kind of make it an actual direction that you want to go down. Yeah, it was never the direction I was looking at. My husband's always been interested and I think the big thing was I've made so many mistakes mm -hmm. that I'd just been put off. It was fear. I was scared. Yeah. And I thought that that was the way it was. I didn't realise that, mm -hmm. you know, 
ultimately it's the right education and the right way to do it. Yeah. It's feasible to do and it's totally and utterly changed our lives since. I think that's quite a good point as well, is that you actually were the one who didn't want to get involved in property because I know quite a lot of people in the community, they have partners and things who are quite anti-property and investing yeah. in their education, things like that. And if you look at where you were then to where you are now... Total role reverse. I was going to say that's a complete 180. But I'm worth it? Oh, without a shadow of a doubt. <laughs> I actually decided on the Beginner's Property Secrets Day that we could and would do it. Yeah. Um, and the biggest things for me were that I was concerned because I've obviously got two young children. Yes, yeah. The amount of time I would spend away and the, the funds that I didn't really have available. Mm. But I also knew that that was kind of enough pain for me to make it work. So I started investing part-time initially. Mm -hmm. We built our entire portfolio using none of our own money. Fantastic. So all joint ventures and in the last three years, kind of since starting out, mm -hmm. it's just, it's changed absolutely everything. I decided on the beginner's day I wanted Peter Jones's job. <laughs> so, <laughs> You've got to have those goals. Yeah. So um, going back to joint ventures then, so for those watching who might not know what joint ventures are, can you just tell us a little bit about that and how you get involved in those? So joint ventures are effectively where you can create more with less, that's it in mm -hmm. a nutshell. So the way that we structure our joint ventures is we work with partners who have maybe funds sat in a bank, and family members initially, so it's two mm -hmm. family members who have funds that were sat in a bank, they weren't really earning much um, on the kind of an interest yeah. rate in the bank and we joint venture to create a portfolio of properties that we share. Mm -hmm. um, we share the risk, we share the reward. Okay. They are completely hands-free, our joint venture partners, so they do the funds, they all review the property portfolios, yeah. but other than that, quite often they don't even see the properties that we buy. Wow. Um, and we'll find them, we'll fill them, we'll do mm -hmm. all of the refurb work, so we do all of the manual side, or we outsource a lot of that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and our joint venture partners basically have a hands-free, risk-free investment. So it's a win-win. Total win-win. Yes. That's fantastic. So um, also, um, buy to lets as well, you were saying, were your other main focus. Yes. Um, I think quite a lot of people, when they come to Progressive, they get so wrapped up in the other strategies. Yeah. They're like, oh, commercial conversion, service accommodation. But this one kind of gets pushed to the side because everything else it's, is quite yeah. shiny. But um, how are they working for you? Obviously, that's... We've that's tried and tested income. different methods. Our main income are... The single let properties mm -hmm. I am a big old champion of single lets <laughs> being sexy I know people don't think that they are but they've changed my life yeah. and the lives of my family members too the buy refurbish refinance model is it's the simplest it's a fundamental mm -hmm. and actually even if you are doing commercial conversions or service accommodation or rent to rent it doesn't matter what strategy it is you need that core yeah. which is how to find them how to fund them yeah. and how to fill them those three steps mm -hmm. which in theory are very very simple but take a little bit of work yeah. but once you do it it's a cookie cutter approach so it's the yeah. least work it's the simplest it's the only method to cookie cutter approach mm -hmm. and just follow that process from guess, start to finish yeah Makes once you've simple. got it done it's just step and repeat basically yeah. isn't it? rinse and repeat i wanted we, we invest in property for a good life mm -hmm. you know i'm very fortunate in terms of the time that i've now got free and yeah. i didn't want to create another job for, for ourselves so by using that model we outsource most parts of it Wow. And it, it's it's just it's the simplest format without a shadow of a doubt. <laughs> Everyone should do yeah. it. <laughs> um, we just had Barry pop up on there. I'm just asking, how do you find JVs? Uh, great question. Um, they are literally everywhere. And if I'm really honest, I didn't believe it when I first mm -hmm. started. My biggest hurdle when I first started investing in property was that I couldn't find joint venture finance. I didn't believe anyone would joint venture with me. Mm -hmm. I didn't believe I had no funds at all to start with. And actually our first joint venture partners were family members. So there's three key things that we say um, in terms of joint ventures that your joint venture partner will need to do, which mm -hmm. is to know you, to like you and to trust you. Okay. And you've already got at least two of those yeah. things <laughs> with your family members or the friends or the people in your network yeah. already. So our, to answer Barry's question, our family members um, basically watched what we were doing. So I was going along to all of the networking events. I was coming back into to Peterborough all of the time mm -hmm. to go to training events, to to be mentored mm -hmm. and I totally and utterly immersed myself into it yeah. around what I was doing already, around having children in a full time job. And our family members saw what we were doing. Mm -hmm. Um when I, I done it a little bit backwards. Um so I came off the back of the masterclass training being told go and view all of the properties that you mm -hmm. can and put in all of the offers that you can and want stuck. And at that point I had no funds available <laughs> at all. <laughs> I had the offer accepted and it was like, that's great, but what do we do yeah, now? Yeah, where's the money? And it was telling everyone what we do. So telling my sister, telling my father-in-law, and they loaned us the funds for our first deposit. The first one is the hardest one to get. Mm -hmm. 
but once you've got that you've built momentum so from there our joint venture partners have come from people within the progressive property community yes, yeah. i've been introduced to joint venture partners through the ones who've worked with us social media mm-hmm. it's been absolutely vital for us telling everyone what we do on there so um posts on social media people then get in touch with you and they see what you're doing and we'll yeah. replicate those results so to answer the question Barry they are everywhere there's people in your black book now contact people in your family and your friends and the people that you work with and you network with who have funds that you can help them to make the most of and create a, a win-win for you too that's fantastic so really it's just tell everyone what you do show what you're doing to as many people as possible definitely it's getting your message out there mm-hmm. because if you don't tell people what you do they'll never know and actually you know I'm very fortunate that what well, I'm mentored by Rob and one of the things that he yeah. always talks about is the fact that if you can help people and you don't you're actually doing them a disservice yeah so I'd say the biggest key to that as well was to believe in yourself and what you bring to the table I think my what held me back in terms of joint ventures initially was not really having faith in the fact that I could do it yeah. and comparing myself to everybody else around me when when you value what you bring to the mm-hmm. table what skill sets you've got and that you can fill a missing puzzle piece for somebody else because if you've got people you work with or people who you know really well who've got a, a vocation or a job that they love mm-hmm. that they don't want to get rid of they earn really good money and it's sat in a bank earning nothing you're you're doing them a disservice if you don't help them so yeah valuing yourself yeah. is absolutely key have confidence in what you've learned as well because i think a lot of people start it and they're very they don't want to put themselves forward as an expert or a property investor because yeah. they're not that sure in themselves to start with yeah, I think confidence is absolute key and the confidence comes from your knowledge mm. but you've got to you've got to start the ball rolling and it's actually um, it's maintaining that momentum because I think what we find is that if we've, every one of us have done it you know gone on a training course yeah. or read a book or bought the book yes and then gone well, I bought the book and it sits on the shelf and you never <laughs> shelf ever read development. it <laughs> shelf development yeah. indeed and you never ever read it when the action is actually taking action mm-hmm. so it's about just getting out of your comfort zone starting yeah. to post on social media going to networking events mm-hmm. and introducing yourself to everybody and I'd be really honest with people I'm still at the start of my pro- training journey mm-hmm. but I'm being trained by progressive property I leveraged progressive property yeah. <laughs> their skill set the amazing mentors that I had I leveraged the, that to the hilt to get people to buy into me it's not necessarily the deals people buy into you mm-hmm. so if you're a good person who's going to give people a good return on their money and you can build that rapport with mm-hmm. people you only need to get the first one done and momentum yeah. kind of takes over from there and that's really good advice there Barry I hope that helps hopefully <laughs> yeah so um obviously you've done a lot of training with us you've said about your strategies as well um whereabouts are you now with us at progressive like you mentioned a bit that you do some training but how how did that come about like was that something you always wanted to do yeah so i think from day one from the beginners property secrets seeing what peter jones had done Mm -hmm. in terms of who what he taught us in such a short space of time really but more so than that that he'd turned me i literally sat with my arms folded to begin (laughs) with my husband dragged me along because he was in a job that he really disliked and wanted to get out of and i was really cynical thought every training company was selling you a dream (laughs) thought that you could only do it if you had you know a huge pot of money to begin with and i think the fact that he managed to turn me around and make me understand that i was my biggest limiting factor there Mm -hmm. made me realize that i wanted to be a trainer i wanted to take over his job and to do that i knew i needed to build a portfolio so i had this kind of combined little role of I need a good property portfolio to be a speaker Mm -hmm. and to be a speaker I need a good property portfolio so they (laughs) they both kind of rolled into one Um, so that was when we realised that actually we wanted property to eventually be our main focus Mm -hmm. um, and started doing it part time initially so I knew I wanted to be a speaker and a trainer and I because some my husband's really really he's going to hate me if he's watching this he's really (laughs) risk averse and we were kind of stuck between that well do we do property training and mm-hmm. just do property training or do I do speaker training as okay, well yeah. so I started initially with property training and attended the master class to get the foundational yeah. knowledge but I also knew that I was working full time as was my husband we've got two young children and I know the type of person that I am that I'd go home and life would get in the way yeah. and so therefore I knew I needed accountability and so VIP was the, the route that we took okay and once we so I'd done master class and started on the VIP program and knew I wanted to be mm-hmm. a speaker and Chris was like well we've got to do property first and we've got to get some results yeah. from that first but I also knew that the two would go hand in hand mm-hmm. because learning to be a good speaker meant that I was able to raise joint venture finance yeah. and learn the kind of the pitching skills so 
even though he didn't want me to, <laughs> and even though I couldn't really afford it, we put it onto a credit card, and I attended the speaker training, I'd done mm. the two side by side, and I firmly believe that each one helped the other. Yeah. The speaker skills helped to raise finance and helped to build relationships with estate agents mm-hmm. and vendors, and the property side meant that I had something to learn and speak about, so mm-hmm. I had these two things running side, side by side, and now speaking is actually my main the thing yeah. that takes up most of my time because property is relatively systemized um, and the passive income from property mm-hmm. frees me up the time to be a speaker yeah. for the trainer i guess you and said I'm, as well the property side it's very cookie cutter so you yeah. don't actually have to invest that much time in it now because you have your systems and everything yeah so we still are I'm, I'm still involved in it but i'll do i spend a lot less time so i initially started 10 hours a week that's what okay. i started working when i was working part-time um, sorry, working full time, two young children. I then went from five days to four, four days to three. Even though we'd already replaced my income inside mm-hmm. of that twelve months, Chris is really risk averse. My husband, so we decided that we continue to work. Yeah. It. And eventually, I thought, well, there's no point in moving from three days to two, so I left <laughs> work. <laughs> Just packed it in. Yeah, which meant I had a lot more time to spend on property and speaking. Mm-hmm. However, speaking be- had become my passion, and property kind of just it runs itself mm-hmm. in that respect. We outsource to really good managing agents. I use sourcing agents and estate mm-hmm. agents to find the deals. So the work that I had to do actually was quite minimal, yeah. and still is. So I do the odd viewing. We'll look at the projects that we're looking at. You know, a lot of it's kind of online, mm-hmm. on email, or on phone calls. So I'm much more free to be able to do it. That's brilliant. So obviously you've done all this training you said you were doing the master class as well as the vip and then the speaker training how long do you think it took you until you started seeing results after your training um, so in terms of results from property they were really quick mm-hmm. and i think a part of that was that i'd just jump feet first into it so i still had prior commitments and it scares me when people kind of go well i'm just gonna yes. leave the job yeah that's what i was going to come on to next <laughs> yeah because like you said you you narrowed your days yeah, down over time whereas some people like i see them come on the training and immediately they're like oh i've quit my job and it's all a bit i have so much respect <laughs> for you being able to do that but uh, it's not something i could have ever done um <coughs> you know i've got a ton of commitments otherwise you know we've got a mortgage to pay got children mm. so it was a case of we've got to fit it in around what we fit in yeah and so it was one of the, the key things that I was told was actually to make it fit and I thought mm-hmm. I didn't have enough time Chris and I barely you know sit down together every mm-hmm. evening and I was set the task of monitoring down everything I do in a day yeah. so that was my VIP mentor had said to me write down everything that you do from the start of your day to the end of mm-hmm. your day M- menial little tasks how much time you spend on Facebook how much time you spend watching TV yeah and then when I took that back, we reviewed how much time I spent kind of wasting time. Was it a lot? So it was. It was yeah. how much time you... Well, you'd like scroll through Facebook and you go, well, I'm going to do five minutes on Facebook and then an hour and a half Yeah, later. before you know it, you're still scrolling. Yeah, you're actually you see what everyone's eating for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> and that kind of... That happened with TV, you know. Okay. Like, you're exhausted from work and... and I'm sure people will relate to that when you've worked all day, bath the children, put them to yeah. bed and then sit down. You just, I'd just bench and I'd sit and I'd watch a TV programme and that would roll into two or three. Yeah. So then it was an agreement that I would spend minimum 10 hours per week, okay. whether it be, and the way I allocated it was two hours per evening. Yeah. Once all of my day jobs were done, once the children had gone to bed, half seven till half nine, mm-hmm. spend looking through my movement, social media, etc. And inside of the first three months, I'd done a masterclass in the March 2015, and by I started VIP in April and by end of July, beginning of August, we got our first property. Oh, wow. So it was relatively quick. I was going to say quite a quick turnaround, especially when you weren't, like you said, you were doing only a few hours every evening. Like that wasn't like you were investing all your time. So those are really quick results. It was, I think momentum is the thing that carries us through. Having that accountability because there were times when I couldn't be bothered. You know, when you finish the day in work and you can't be bothered and it was just forcing yourself to do it because ultimately so we chris and i have like phrases that we've we've used throughout Mm -hmm. one of the phrases that has stuck with me over the last three years is that it's short-term pain for a long-term gain yeah so two hours per night if i couldn't do two hours one night i'd do them a weekend Mm -hmm. because i worked quite a lot of weekends if i was going to a networking event i'd count that as my two hours but i'd have to make sure i collected business cards and given business cards Mm -hmm. out and spoken to people rather than just turn up sit down and hope for the best (laughs) so our results were quite quick in that respect and once you get the first ones it was then our next joint venture partners kind of come on board mm-hmm. so raising finance was the biggest catalyst then so we were finding the deals we were finding the finance yeah. and putting the two together fantastic i think that's really relatable for quite a lot of people as well um oh barry which pay course would you recommend first 
Um, it depends on where you're at, in all honesty. If you're relatively new, so feel free to tap it in there and we'll, we'll pick it up. If you're relatively new or you've been doing this for a relatively short space of time, my personal viewpoint is that Masterclass is the, the next step for any investor. It's the fundamentals. It's four days' worth of training. And if I'm honest, it was really intense. Yeah. You know, it was it was hard work because it was long days but the amount you, you come out of it and established property investor mm-hmm. you have everything in your tool belt to be able to well to be proven to go yeah. out negotiate with estate agents we got our first discounted deal where we it was on the market for eighty five thousand pounds and we got it um a sale agreed at 65 oh, wow <laughs> and this was our first deal straight after yeah. and i wasn't 100 percent confident in mm-hmm. it by that point but i knew i had the skill set we'd gone through negotiation strategies so i just kind of I basically done as I was told so masterclass yeah. taught all of those fundamentals of how to find them and fund them and build mm-hmm. them so that would be my advice if you're relatively new if you're not then let us know yeah and I'll, I'll give you my advice in regards to that but in terms of fundamental learning it was masterclass doing it two years no results yet still a beginner so yeah masterclass then. Yeah, masterclass without a shadow of a doubt um, and it can be firstly I, I want to honor the fact that you, you're actually still doing it because so many people start and we are impatient creatures you know yes. you get two three four months in and go i'm giving in it doesn't work and it's it's not easy in that respect it's simple but mm-hmm. it takes a little bit of time but it's getting the momentum so i think having the confidence and the skill set from from master class will without a shadow of a doubt accelerate that mm-hmm. and you say you're still a beginner i'm three years into this i'm a beginner in terms of how far i am compared to a lot of other people and i think that's a key one of the key mm-hmm. kinds of take homes from it is don't compare yourself to others definitely because it will make you feel you'll look at what you've achieved for the fact that you've been learning for the past two years the fact that you've stuck at it is testament to to the fact that you want to make it work Mm -hmm. whereas some people have started and exited their businesses before then so don't give up yeah get the right learning and it you can't make it work for you i think that's really good advice there um speaking of advice so so say someone did want to get into the strategies that you're in by to let what would be your top three tips for them Okay. So the first one would be definitely to build relationships. Mm-hmm. You cannot do it on your own. And you're gonna it's so much easier when you build relationships with people. That's every part of building relationships with potential joint venture partners. Speaking to the people in your network currently. So it's making sure that you connect with everyone who you can help who can help mm-hmm. you. Start building relationships with estate agents now. We yeah. still get the bulk of our deals from estate agents. So I'd, my advice would be you will you tend to find wherever people live there's that estate agent's yeah. row where there's yes. one after another after another pick two or three mm-hmm. and just start going in speak to them face to face don't just do it over the phone yeah. make sure they know who you are because those relationships with estate agents make a massive difference mm-hmm. we're really good friends with the main estate agent we work with and initially it was just going in to visit always take a little gift yeah. so <laughs> it does help borders biscuits work really well for <laughs> the estate agent we work with and having that mind space with them so building relationships is key building relationships with people who will form your team as mm-hmm. well so a lot of it was at networking events so meeting local trades people and even if you've not yet started kind of keeping in contact with people okay. telling them what it is that you're looking to do so relationships absolutely key is, is the first top tip the second tip would be perseverance mm-hmm. to set yourself a goal but actually reverse engineer it so yeah. i'm renowned for being a shiny penny chaser i see all the different (laughs) business models and want to do every single one and i've tried different models from the buy refurb refinance Mm -hmm. and they don't work for me and i know they do for a lot of other people because i want a simple life yeah i want to be able to buy property have it rented out with as least hassle as possible so i would say start with a goal of where you want to be in the next 12 months where you want to be in the next six months or you want to be in the next three months Mm -hmm. and persevere with it so go to the viewings you won't get or you'd be very fortunate if you get the first offer yeah. accepted put offers in on absolutely everything you've got an interest in start getting that kind of momentum going and mm-hmm. um, so building your relationships and perseverance going to the networking events even if you feel like you're not making the most of it really go along to them introduce yourself to everybody and tell everyone what you do um, step three will be something that I learned on one of my what was my very first VIP session. John Philbin, who was my mentor and just got me from the start, told me to employ the three foot rule. And okay. I uh, that, that was my face. Yes. What's, the three what's, foot what's rule? that? Tell us more. And basically, it was that you tell everybody within three foot of you what you do. Oh, okay. Whether that is the people that you're currently working with, mm. your family members, the people you're in the queue with a Costa, <laughs> the people when you sat on a train. I talk to everybody and I tell everyone what I do. Mm. 
and that really builds your relationships with people so if you've already got people in your life who you could be working with telling them what you're doing if they're not aware of it mm-hmm. so our family members telling them what we were doing I didn't realise that my sister and my father-in-law had funds that they were willing to invest with us yeah. they loaned us the funds for our first deposit and we just paid them an interest rate and we continue to do mm-hmm. that now three years down yeah. the line um, so telling everyone what you do that you're interested in property that you're taking photos of social media is absolutely key for it as well taking photos of yourself at all of the progressive events mm-hmm. back of the room I still yeah. do it now with all of the people around you putting it on social media and telling everyone face to face what mm-hmm. you do because you never know who you might be able to help or who can help you yeah. so there'll be people who you can use who you've already got on your friendship circle doing mm-hmm. kind of trades or conveyancing or if it's not them they can introduce you to somebody who can because mm-hmm. this wider network yeah. everything is kind of so much closer than we believe it is yeah. I guess on no social media as well you never know who's watching so someone might like it and then all of a sudden all their friends sit and before you know it you might have another investor lined up without even realising exactly. we've had investors introduce us to other investors okay. so you would think that they'd kind of stick at it themselves mm-hmm. but if you give someone a good service and they've kind of reached what they can invest with you at that yeah. point in time you know they're going to come back you don't need a huge amount they've introduced us to other investors and they found out through social media what was happening yeah. so yeah tell everyone what you do persevere and build relationships would be my key things to build in my yeah. tech portfolio definitely. I think they're really good three points there um so maybe if we flip the coin then okay. and what would you say has been some of the hardest bits about starting property getting started is the mm. hardest thing because fear totally holds you back it yeah. paralyzed me for so long because i've made so many mistakes and actually it and holton one of the most close trainers says proper it stuck with me from the start yeah. property is like a bad haircut eventually it's going to grow out <laughs> and i think i'd been so put off by making mistakes in property mm-hmm. that i thought that was the way that it worked yeah so i think the things that kind of were the hardest were actually getting started overcoming that fear mm-hmm. of you know investing time money and time away from my family when really that was my main aim that was really difficult initially but persevering through it you come out the other side hence the reason short term (laughs) gain for long term gain I'd say not having faith in myself as well even Mm -hmm. if other people have it in you I didn't value what I brought to the table in terms of a joint venture so that really held me back from the start because I've seen everyone around me raising finance Mm -hmm. and thought well what's wrong with me why can't (laughs) I do it everyone else seems to be able to and I think it was that I didn't value what I could offer in a joint venture, whereas that's totally turned around on its head. It was Glenn Delve who mm-hmm. spent a lot of time with me. Um, he actually recommended I read a book called T. Harbecker's Secrets of a Millionaire Mind. Okay. And C. Har- T. Harbecker is a, you know renowned in the world of property. Uh, sorry, in the world of personal development. Mm-hmm. But Secrets of a Millionaire Mind talks about your money blueprint and how worthy you feel of your your money and what yeah. you're entitled to. And it had such a profound effect. I've read it so many times. I've listened to the audio God knows how many times. But it made a big difference. So the mindset part mm. was was there. So they're kind of the first two top tips in terms of what held me back and what to mm-hmm. overcome. Yeah. I'd say me. I was my own biggest obstacle because yeah. life, you know, it, it's busy. But for me, I knew that I needed, I needed people to help me to account mm. because... I've got a lot of people around me or had a lot of people around me who didn't understand what we were doing yeah. and those kind of negative influences and I've still got some um, but when people don't understand that's where I knew I'd go home so I'd come to Progressive and I'd get all excited yeah. and you're all riled up after an event and it's like I'm ready to go I'm ready mm-hmm. to go and then I'd go home and I'd have to go back to a job yeah. where I was back doing the reality. same thing yeah. <laughs> same thing over and over and then having children you know that took a lot of time yeah. and then I'd tell people what I was doing and lots of people were interested but mm-hmm. I had those few people in life who were like I don't understand why you do it you're spending so much time away from your, from your family mm-hmm. I thought that was what you wanted to do and those negative influences chip away at you so yeah. I think it's just stick with it and you know, I'm not saying cut all of your negative no. friends off, but you limit the amount of time you spend with them or just mm-hmm. don't tell them what you're doing. Tell yeah. everybody else <laughs> instead. They're probably the biggest things that held me back. Mm. Um, allowing other people's success to cloud my judgment because mm-hmm. I've measured myself by their success. Yeah. Um, and the, getting the momentum to get started. Fear is one of the biggest things that holds us back. I didn't think I had enough time, money mm-hmm. to get started when you can start from a stand and start yeah. if you've got the right knowledge and the right support network around you. You know, this is my extended family I come to Progressive so often it is literally my home from home but they become your extended family yeah. and you get that fix of positivity which makes a big difference because there will be bumps in the road and a shadow of a doubt and often doesn't get accepted or you know 
you feel like it's the end of the world mm-hmm. or you feel like you're the only one having a tough day yeah. and you have people who are going through that journey with you going through those same kind of highs and lows mm-hmm. having that network really yeah. really key oh brilliant I think we see a lot of that in the Facebook community as well so it's if you can't come to the events you can get the support from online as well totally. just being a part of that community having your questions answered yeah. it's that voice at the end of a phone or at the end of a keyboard you can ask a question and get a response so quickly and even you don't even have to do that if you're kind of a really shy person using that the progressive property facebook community as a resource mm-hmm. typing in a question you type in you, you know mortgage so broker and you'll find all of the information that you need that support in that mm-hmm. respect even if you can't do the face to face it's absolutely vital yeah yeah. Can agree more. Brilliant. Um, okay, well, just one last question then, really. What's your favourite part of being an investor slash entrepreneur? Well, that's a chance of adulthood time freedom. Yeah. So my life was totally different. I was working a lot of hours. I worked every Saturday. Okay. And that was a big thing for me because I worked every Saturday, which meant I only had Sundays with my family. On a Sunday, my husband would be in a horrific mood because he'd be going back to work <laughs> on a Monday. And we had all of this pressure on. And making it fit yeah so for me it's time freedom because i don't have to work anymore mm. you don't have to unless you choose to and i love what i do now totally and utterly love what i do and each day is different mm-hmm. so this week is totally different to what it will have been yeah. two three four years ago and i spent monday all day working mm-hmm. because i wanted to do it but tuesday i was a progressive delivering training events and helping other people and yesterday I got to go to my son's stay and play day and mm-hmm. um, then go out and do fun stuff and then at the weekend I'm going away because I can I've got yeah. time and money freedom that I just didn't have prior to property it's, it's the vehicle that is the most secure has just changed my life without mm-hmm. a shadow of a doubt I do sound like I'm rich <laughs> and, and I'm not if I'm really honest I don't love the property itself mm-hmm. I love what it does for you. Yeah. You can systemise so much of it and outsource so much that it becomes relatively hands-free. Mm. But what you get to do with your time freedom is just unimaginable from the starting point of where mm. we were. I hear that from a lot of property investors, actually, that it's not necessarily the property that they love. It's the lifestyle that they get at the end of it, which they really enjoy. Yeah. Um, and it is like you're saying again, that short-term pain for long-term gain. I think that's really important. I think that's something that everyone can take away from that as well. But um, yeah, thank you so much for coming and joining thank us you for today. Me. Um, there'll probably be some more questions that might pop up um, in the comments afterwards, yeah. but um, Tony will be able to answer yeah, those I'll if you do up. have more. But um, yeah, thank you very much for spending some time in the sunshine. The sunshine. Um, but yeah, that's it then, guys. Thank, thank you. Very you. Much. Bye. Bye.